Good morning, class. It's Jilly Ryder, and welcome to the sixth week of organizational behavior. You're almost through this course. And gosh, this week, did we ever unpack a lot of information? If you're anything like me, then you have been able to trace some personal experiences with some of the scenarios that we covered this week in regards to conflict and negotiation as well as organizational culture. I would like to actually just focus on organizational culture because I believe that the lesser is always included in the greater. And so negotiation, conflict, performance, engagement, and development, all of that is all going to fall under the organizational culture. And so let's spend a little bit more time there and see how you feel about it. Now, as you read this week from Robbins and Judge, who are our authors of our organizational behavior textbook, their definition of organizational culture is shared meaning. As you also know, we don't always have shared meaning and so to be able to take multiple employees that come from various backgrounds with meaning that sometimes even will contrast with our meaning and to be able to engage and have them committed and cohesive in order to walk that path towards the organization's vision and mission is a challenging task. And that's why I wanted to talk a little bit more about that culture. Now, we were given seven characteristics that define or rather monitor the, the pulse of the organizational culture. And the first one that we were given was innovation and risk taking, which is so important because you don't want to have a group or team of employees that are content to be status quo, just to meet the minimum requirements, uh, just to kind of stay stagnant and stale. What we want to find in the culture are employees who can push beyond that barrier, who want to develop and grow, who can attach themselves to the organization and come up with ways to promote that growth. And in doing so, they're gonna promote themselves. It, it, it's just a pathway to success. Now, at the same time, as far as the risk taking, you know, we're not referring to that as ways to get out of what the minimum requirements are for the job. And so if we look at what is healthy, I mean, it can always be argued with any of these characteristics that if you score low and you've got that substandard employee that's just meeting the status quo and that's just there for the, the paycheck, to be honest, compared to that employee who's engaged and committed and part of the team and wants to grow and find ways to help that organization's vision and statement become what they intend for it to become. And so you look at that and you find a healthy balance. Um, one of the other characteristics was attention to detail and and I believe that all of these characteristics kind of bleed into the other because if you're doing a really good job you're going to pay attention to detail if you're that employee that is just there for the paycheck then you know you're not going to pay attention to detail in fact you're going to take some risks to make sure that you can just get by with what you need to do um, the other one was an outcome orientation, and obviously I think that the outcome orientation is something that we gauge the success of the vision and mission of not only the team, but the organization itself. And obviously we're all there to do a job. The organization is there to provide a service, 
to its clients or its products or whatever industry that the organization is participating in. They have their outcomes and their strategic management and what they hope to accomplish. And so it's important that those those outcomes and the outcome orientation is set up in a structured way so that when employees come in and especially in the selection process it's very important to to go through and diligently try to identify people who would be a good match and are aligned with the organization's vision and mission that have the experience and not only that but the want to to be able to meet those goals. Uh, people orientation obviously is, is very, very important. Um, I, I will say sometimes I think we focus too much on people orientation in that sometimes we give a little bit more attention to that than what the actual essential functions of the job are. It's very important that we promote that work-life balance. If we don't, if we don't share a, a, a genuine, sincere, caring perspective or compassionate approach to our employees, if it shows that the company really only wants to to make money and grow and that they can replace employees and that they don't matter, obviously that's diseased. Um, however, at the same time, I think that employees need to understand what the essential functions of their job are, but also what their responsibilities are. Um, while we do want to have a good balance with that, I think that structure and discipline is what is supportive and as our text has told us this week it's exactly what is needed and, and studies show as you've read this week that when there is a good structure in place then there are better performance evaluations the outcomes are a lot better the people orientation and the outcome orientation will always be a difficult task uh, to balance uh, one of my favorite quotes, and I think I mentioned this in, in someone's discussion this week, uh, came from Rosalind Carter, and she said that a leader will take people where they want to go, but a great leader will take people not necessarily where they want to go, but where they ought to be. And so that is in line with making sure that there is a clear path and a clear expectation of what each employee is responsible for and then coming behind them as a leader and making that pathway clear and possible. So we also have team orientation and the same as there you know you get a lot of subcultures in the team and to be able to effectively get that reading to be where the team is engaged and in line and working towards that common goal is what we want to do. And this is where the people orientation comes in as well. Uh, there can be some type of stragglers or substandard employees that um, maybe bring down the team altogether. And oftentimes, if we focus more on what the group wants or needs, I often say it's like the tail wagging the dog. And I know that that's kind of harsh, um, but at the same time, it's important that there is an employee base, a, a talent base that is in your wagon. You want somebody in the wagon with you that's going to help you be successful, um, not only as a leader, because you're only as good as your people are when you're a leader. But you want people in there that's going to be uplifting and encouraging and supporting the team, that cohesiveness and that team spirit. Again, it all comes with that leadership, um, but some leaders can also reinforce those dysfunctional behaviors that we read about this week. 
And so it takes a lot of courage in order to be that one that people don't necessarily like because they're not going to truly like doing something that they don't want to until they get there. Uh, I've often heard it said, if you don't know where you're going, how do you know when you get there? So it's very important that we just kind of focus on setting expectations inside of that culture and not necessarily um, blending it all together, but bringing it all together to use collectively with the multiple giftings and, and talents of the workforce and our team to find out what the weaknesses and strengths are and to use those. Um, every good teacher knows that in their teaching um, classes. We learn that in elementary school. I think I recently, if you'll recall, we spoke about everything I need to learn. I learned in kindergarten. And so that's a good one to keep in your back pocket. Um, we've also got the team orientation, which, you know, I've kind of already discussed uh, with the people orientation, the aggressiveness. Um, that's a real hard one. And I'm not sure if some of you had some difficulty with that term rather this week, um, because just in and of itself, aggressiveness seems like to like it's a negative connotation and something that we really want to avoid. Um, but I believe it kind of goes along with courage too. Now we can look on the low uh, scale of the aggressiveness and see obviously um, from an ethical and employment work behavior uh, perspective, aggressiveness, bullying, um, just ethical indignities will not be tolerated. But in order to have courage and take those risks and, and be innovative, then you have to also be aggressive. Now, our text said that um, it is really more related to competitiveness um, rather than easygoing. So I'd like for you to consider thinking about that a little bit more because a lot of our studies are just that. They're studies. But when it comes to human nature and the skills that, that we've been given, as you've all learned in your undergraduate classes and in the divine design, how we were all equipped with gifts and, and skills and not one thing did the Lord miss whether it is how we react from an emotional standpoint, he makes good of everything. And so if you see a little bit of aggressiveness, I would like you to consider that that's not always a bad thing because sometimes it's going to take that aggressive person to lead. Now, you may or may not agree with me, but I think that all of these seven characteristics are not good or bad in and of themselves. I, I believe that they're necessary and that they truly do capture the essence of what really happens in a culture. You know, if you want to take the pulse on something, then you just need to look at these seven characteristics. The last one was stability. Now, that in and of itself is certainly a challenge, especially in the workforce, um, in regards to the sustainability of a company. But the stability, you want a strong, stable workforce. You want employees behind you and not a revolving door. You want to have an equipping and you want to be able to provide the resources and the pathway for those employees to be successful. Because in doing so, then there will be stability within the company, as well as wonderful succession planning for those employees that you are moving on, who may also become leaders themselves or move up into the company to do wonderful things. And so I think it's important for us to understand, as we've learned this week, that our, our personalities, our emotions, uh, so many things that fall under that behavioral umbrella. It really is the heartbeat of the organization or the team 
for the group. And so strategically, what our objective is, is to take all of those characteristics and make sure that they're not diseased, that they're healthy readings, and that they continue to be healthy readings. And if we look at each of these respectively and individually and as a marker to help us define and diagnose any issues that need to be addressed, then you will be in front of it instead of behind it. Because as we know, it's, it's very difficult in change management to change the culture, especially if you're a new manager coming in and a new leader to try and reverse some of the damage that has, has been done by either an, another leader who, again, perhaps may have supported some of the dysfunctional behaviors or simply from employees who are not engaged or committed and have no desire to do so. And so it takes some courage in order to do that and lead. And uh, next week is our seventh week in organizational behavior. We are going to tackle some topics that are going to be amazing. Again, I promise it's going to be another week that you can pull out some personal experience and that you will be able to equip yourselves and find yourselves ready to go out and lead. So I hope that the information that I've given you today will equip you and bring you closer to mastering uh, the ability to effectively and positively affect your organizational culture. And I pray this week that the Lord will open our eyes so that we don't miss a moment, so that we can find his heart and his behavior and his character in our next chapter. Good luck this week, and we will meet again next week to discuss everything you've learned. Take care.